Hello everyone, today I'm going to do my first book review and it's about a book I read in German and I also think it's only available in German and some other European languages. Uh, I haven't found an edition in English so I'm not sure, <laughs> I wasn't really sure if I should do this in English or not but anyway I'm gonna do it. And the book I'm talking about is um, Blackout by Mark Ellsberg. I've read this book already a couple of years ago, I think it was 2013 or 14. And I just reread it this year because I liked it so much and it just stayed with me. And uh, since I started my YouTube channel, I was gonna do a review about it. It's roughly 800 pages, which makes it quite a big book. <laughs> the storyline in this book is there's a blackout in total Europe and there's only one Italian ex-hacker who thinks he found out why this happened and he tries to get to the authorities and uh, wants to show them what he found on his computer but they don't really care and they just kick him out. The, good, the cool thing about this book is that it's really realistic and it, it makes you feel like um, this could really happen and all, it, because it's also set in the, re in the real world like the, in 2012 or something. I also like that it's told from uh, different points of views from different people, different authorities or even different countries. What's a bit maybe boring sometimes or makes it a bit um, dry, a dry reading is that the, it's, there's really a lot of explaining about um, how nuclear plants work or how all the electricity, electricity nets are like connected with each other but even though it's a bit theoretically sometimes it really helps you understand what is going on and because this book stuck to me like that I thought I was gonna do like um, a kind of a special review themes that I that really got me thinking and these would be food and drink, heating, hygiene, security, the next is hygiene um, with no electricity you don't have your pumps working so you can't get the water out of your tap or the toilet won't flush anymore so I guess I would just go outside in the backyard and dig a hole to have a toilet there and uh, we do have a little pond so I guess I would take some of this water to wash my face and stuff and for brushing my teeth I would just well I guess I would just take um bottled water or maybe even take some rainwater because we have like two big um, tanks where I can collect rainwater I guess I would just take that one there I guess washing your hair wouldn't really matter that much anymore what I would really miss would be a hot shower or a bath but I guess yeah we you, you would just have to live with it um, next point would be heating depending on when uh, on to what see in what season the blackout would be I guess in summer it wouldn't really be a big problem but in winter when you get like zero degrees like Celsius not Fahrenheit yeah I could get a little cold but I think we have enough um, blankets and stuff at home um, I definitely wouldn't make a fire in my house I only would do this outside so yeah we just have to get dressed really good and um, cover us with a lot of blankets and maybe even um, sleep in one room all together so we keep a swarm together. I guess I would even sleep uh, on the third floor because it's like the highest up and since heat is going up I think maybe that would it would be the warmest and also if the sun shines the roof gets really warm up there so maybe that would I would sleep up there because it would be the warmest up there and if I would like to make a fire I have like 10-15 minutes to the next forest so I would just go there and cut some wood and make myself a little fire in the backyard food and drink 
this is really something that got me thinking because in the book people ran out of food and drink really fast because they didn't have any on stock. So this got me thinking about the stuff I have in stock and stuff that you can even eat without heating up or that, that you can really keep a long time. Like uh, things in cans like, I don't know, soup in a can or even pasta that you can cook with rainwater, I guess, on a, a little stove or on a fire. I guess the worst part would be drinking because even though I have a pond, I don't think I would go and drink that water even if I cooked it. But since I can collect rainwater, I guess I would go and drink that. Though I know um, as long as it comes from the sky, there's not enough minerals in it. So I got told you should throw in some stones, some pebble stones, and then you have it mineralized. So you could drink it. But um, just because of that, I really stocked up my own uh, water supplies in my basement. So we bought a lot of bottled water and some juice and stuff. And I think this would really last us two weeks or even longer. And also for the food, I have enough pasta down there to live for like a month or two. I have uh, cans of food. So I think that would really be the, the worst part in it, that you would run out of food and drink because you're not going to get anything in a supermarket because they ran out of uh, they, they ran out of it too or it turned bad because they couldn't cool it anymore so yeah that's that's what I really got me thinking there so um, I stocked up on food and drink in my uh, in my own house and then the last point for me would be security um, this not this meaning um, in the book um, the nuclear nuclear plants, are really starting to have problems after some after a day a couple of days and the bigger ones the newer ones after a week or so and since I live only less than four miles from the next nuclear plant um, yeah this kind of this is kind of scary actually because um, when they run out of um, fuel to uh, to cool down cool down the system they have to let some uh, radioactive vapor escape and uh, in some nuclear plants they had to evacuate like <clears throat> for uh, 20 kilometers around because of all the ra radioactivity there so since i'm living this close this uh, yeah gives you a funny feeling in the stomach we even have these um potassium iodide tablets at home we get these from uh, <clears throat> from the authorities because we live so close and you can actually it says to be taken only by order of the appropriate authorities protects the thyroid gland from radioactive iodine yeah so yeah um, I'm not sure what I would do if it would if they would say I had to evacuate from my home to go somewhere else until it's over and maybe not being sure if I could ever return um, because in the book there's areas that have a lot of radioactivity even after the electricity gets back so um, people can't go back to their homes and I think that that would be really hard for me to just leave my house and maybe knowing you never getting you're never gonna go back there. You have to leave everything behind. We can maybe take one suitcase with some clothes and everything and the rest you have just to leave behind. So um, yeah, I really loved this book even though it's sometimes a little dry in theory but it really gets you thinking and that's also one reason because uh, why I reread this book because I, even after three or four years it still it was still stuck in my head so I thought I had to reread it. I actually wanted to do it in English but I couldn't find any English copy of this because this book is really awesome so I gave it a five out of five stars. I would actually love to give it six but I only have five. Yeah that was it. It was my first book review. If you liked it give it a thumbs up. And I hope you back see you soon. Thank you.